we're going to talk about shapes and lines in InDesign. And to start with, we're going to start in our toolbar. We're going to walk through our rectangle, ellipse, and polygon tools. And you're going to notice that next to our rectangle tool, we also have a box that looks very similar, the rectangle frame tool, the ellipse frame tool, and the polygon frame tool. So what's the difference? Well, here's the basic difference between the rectangle frame tool and the rectangle tool itself. One has an X in the middle of it, the other one doesn't. Now people believe that this X here means that it can only hold an image. Well, actually, not true. A shape or a container in InDesign is simply a container, and anything can go into that container, whether it be text or an image or a color. There is an ever so slight difference with this, but this really only comes down to when you are placing something on a master page and you have to be very specific about its content. So for now, really, the difference between these containers is really nothing. If I were to take my type tool and click inside this container that has the rectangle frame associated with it, as opposed to just simply clicking inside the rectangle container, it does exactly the same thing. In InDesign, it really treats as a container, as a container, as a container. Image, picture, graphic, text, or color can go in any container. So for this particular purpose, I'm going to use just the basic tools, rectangle, ellipse, and polygon tool. When you draw one of the rectangle tools, you'll notice you get a tool hint in the lower right-hand corner showing you the size of the object. Trying to make this line up with the exact numbers that you get really doesn't work very well. So you can always draw a shape the size you need by not drawing the shape, but simply taking the tool and clicking on your page and entering in the values that you want to have to be for the size. And then the size of that object appears. You can also resize this object by using your selection tool and simply pulling on any one of the center pull handles or the corners to resize. If you would like this to be a specific size after you've drawn the shape, you can always go into your control bar here into the width and the height, and you can enter in values there, or under the window menu, call up the properties panel, and then be able to work with the properties here, again, with the width and the height of the object. So, Creating a container, quite simple. To delete a container, select it with your selection tool and simply hit delete and away it goes. If you'd like to draw a perfect square, select your rectangle tool, begin to draw and hold down your shift key. While you're holding shift, the tool is gonna to constrain and you'll end up with, in this case, a perfect square. If you'd like to draw from the center of an object, you can hold down your Option or Alt key and begin to draw, and that will draw your object from the center. Holding down the Shift key will also constrain to draw a perfect square from the center. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to select those two and delete them. Going on to the Ellipse tool, draw an ellipse. You can have an oval. Again, hold down your Shift key to constrain and you get a perfect circle. Click without drawing. It's going to call up the dialog box that you can enter your values into and click OK, and that will draw your shape. Change the size of that shape, either in your properties panel or in your control bar to change that shape overall. The polygon tool allows you to draw a multi-sided shape Hold down the Shift key, and that's going to constrain all the sides. If you'd like to draw a container that is different from the six-sided standard container, you can click on the Polygon tool, click on your page, and enter in the values in which you'd like to have the width and the height of your object, and control the number of sides of that object. So we have a pentagon. You'll notice when we draw with the Polygon tool, it has this feature called the star inset. Now a standard star is going to be five sides and the star inset, set to 50%, is going to give us a traditional star. 
So what is the star inset and how does it actually work? Well, I'm going to click again with the polygon tool and set the star inset to zero. And how the star inset works is very straightforward. The star inset takes an imaginary center point on the edge of one of the sides and the percentage between the center point and the edge is what's called the star inset. So if we click on this star, you'll notice that this imaginary middle point of this edge here is halfway in between the center point and the edge of the line. If I were to take the polygon tool and set a very large or high percentage star inset, we're going to get a very pronounced star. If you'd like to create a burst, you can set the number of sides and then do a star inset of approximately 30% and that gives you kind of a burst or medallion look to this. One unique feature to this is when you've drawn your polygon and you'd like to edit it further, you can go back into your polygon tool while you have your object selected on the page, double click, change the number of sides or the star inset here, and then change or click OK, and it will automatically change your polygon. Now one problem with this is that it doesn't offer you a preview of what's going on when you're changing the number of sides. So you do have to give a little bit of guess here and then click OK to find out how that's going to work. You can create triangles by using the polygon tool. Triangles are simply going to be a three-sided shape with zero star inset, and you have a triangle. Now a nice feature with InDesign is you can take any shape that you've drawn, circle, square, ellipse, or polygon, and if you'd like to change that to another shape, you don't have to delete it and draw another shape. You can simply select your shape with your selection tool, go under the object menu, choose convert shape, and then convert it to any other shape that you'd like. Quite simple. Now, interestingly enough with the shapes here, there is a very cool feature called Gridify. And Gridify is quite ingenious. Gridify allows you to draw a singular shape. And if you want multiples of this shape, draw the shape and don't let go of your mouse. And with the mouse held down, use your up arrow to create multiple rows, right arrow to create multiple columns. You can then pull your mouse to resize this entire grid feature. Down arrow is going to remove the number of rows. Left arrow will remove the number of columns. And once you're satisfied with a number of objects you've created this grid, you can let go. Once you've created this grid feature, you're done. If you'd like to create another grid, you'll have to redraw the shape and use the Gridify feature again. Now one unique instance with the Gridify is this. If I draw a polygon, the last used polygon is going to be my default. If I'd like to go in and change the number of sides with this polygon while I'm working, if I use my up or down arrow, it's just simply going to turn into the Gridify mode to give me multiple shapes. However, if I draw with the polygon and I tap the space bar once and let go of the space bar, then when I use the up arrow, it will add sides. The down arrow will remove sides. And while I'm still drawing, if I tap the space bar again, then I use my up arrow and my right arrow, that will bring me back into the Gridify feature. Let me show you that again. Draw a polygon, tap the space bar once. Up arrow add sides, down arrow takes the sides away. Tap the space bar again while I still have the mouse held down. Now up arrow and right arrow will give me the Gridify. Pretty amazing stuff. So simple ways that you can go in and create shapes, but unique to InDesign is the Gridify. I find that to be super helpful. You can do this with lines as well. Any type of shape that you draw, you can use this Gridify mode. Now, let's talk about our rectangle or a square and our corners. When we select a shape that has corners on it, such as this rectangle, you'll see a yellow dot in the upper right hand corner. Hover over that, it says click to edit corners. Once you click to edit the corners, you'll get diamonds on each corner of your rectangle, which you can pull in toward the center and round your corners. Once you round your corners or pull those in, 
you'll notice you get a tool hint coming up that says Option or Alt click to change the shape. You have five shapes. The standard corner, rounded, fancy, bevel, inset, inset rounded, and then back to your normal corners. Those are the five different shapes. You'll also notice when you hover over your corners when you're in edit mode, shift to change one corner. Hold down the shift key and you can change the amount of corner that you get. Now, if you combined both the shift and the option or the alt key, you will be able to go through and change and edit one corner at a time. Nice method. Click off that shape, click back on the shape, and then you'll have to click back on the yellow dot to begin to edit your corners. Now you can also edit your corners in different places. One in your properties panel, you can see that here's the corner, the amount of corner edges, and the style right here. If I set it to be rounded, then I can go and I can set an absolute value here that I want all my corners rounded at the same amount. If I'd specifically like to target one corner, I can click on the link at the corner and I can unlink these so they're not joined together. And I can have different size and different style corners here if I click the preview button and then click OK. The same thing can be done when I'm in the control bar. Here I can control the style of my corners and the size of my corners. And if I'd like to call up that options dialog box, hover over the corner item here. It actually tells you option or alt click to open up your corner options. A third way is to go under the object menu, go to corner options and call up the corner options dialog box. If you want no corner style, simply set that corner to zero. And then no matter what corner style you set, you will get a square corner because it has a value of zero. Each one can be set separately. Now, this will only show up on a rectangle or a square. If you do go in and you draw a polygon, you'll notice that there is no little yellow square in the upper corner of your bounding box, right there where we normally see. But still, because there's corners here, you can still apply a corner to each and every angle or the entire shape overall. The only thing you can't do it to is a circle. There are no corners. Very straightforward ways to be able to create shapes in InDesign. Lines, also quite simple. Drawing a line, when you use the line tool, it's going to draw a line that is not constrained, horizontal or vertically. Hold down your shift key to constrain and draw a line. You can control the weight of the line in the appearance section of the properties panel by adjusting the stroke weight. And you can also do that direct center in your control bar here by adjusting the weight here. InDesign also has several different styles of lines built in, and you can choose any style of line or go to your properties panel and choose that here. To control the color of your line, here in the control bar next to the weight and the style of your line, we have our fill of our shape and the stroke of our shape. Here, this is simply a line, so I can click on the drop down menu and I can choose from a short list of preset colors. There's only seven or eight colors here, RGB, CMYK, and then white and black. So a basic set of colors, but you can create any color that you'd like. Again, you can go over to here to your properties panel and click on the same stroke menu for the color right there. If you'd like to go and you'd like to add further things to these lines, then we need to call up our stroke panel. Window menu, stroke. In our stroke panel, we can also control the weight of the line, but we can control the ends. If you'd like to hot dog the ends of your lines, you can control that there. Again, the style of line from a drop down menu, but you can also add start and stop widgets to your lines, circles, squares, arrows. The scale of those start and end objects are going to be controlled by your scale items here. And when you scale those down, they are going to be in direct proportion when you reduce or enlarge the stroke weight of the line. Choose whatever ends that you'd like. If you get the ends in the wrong way, simply hit the reverse button and they create the opposite ends. Control the values or the size of those ends and you get good proportions 
as you do that. Simple and straightforward items for the lines. So basic shapes creating an InDesign. Whether it be a rectangle, circle, square, triangle, polygon, or a line. Now something interesting with shapes. A lot of times we use text containers. And I'm going to right click on this text container and I'm going to fill this with placeholder text. Because this is a container, can we round the corners of this text container? Of course we can. As we round those corners, you can see that we can create any shape or size of that container. And this is simply text. We could put a border on this container. We could put a fill on this container. Sure, if I put a border on this container, you can see I can do that. I can do any style of corner because it's just a container. It's just a box. There's nothing special. It just happens to hold text. Now, interestingly enough, when you put text in here and you put a border or a fill, you'll notice that the text goes right to the very edge of the container because we usually don't have a border or a fill on the container. Would you create two separate containers so that you could make a bigger container? Absolutely not, because then you have to worry about getting the scale and the size and the proportions correctly, and then you have to move and scale two containers together. A container can hold text or a picture and also have a stroke and or fill on it. Here, which is not a unique situation, we may have a stroke or fill around our text container. Under the object menu and our text frame options, we can control the inset spacing, which is a force field that puts a buffer zone inside our text container if this were to be filled with a color and or have a stroke on it. I don't want my text right up against the edge. I want that buffer zone that will remain exactly that size no matter what size I make my container. And to make sure that that size and that spacing is consistent with my text, I'm gonna double click on the bottom of my text container to make sure that my text container snaps right to the very bottom. Click off this, and I have perfect spacing all around the text and the container. Do not draw a separate box with a stroke on it and put a text container over the top. You will never get the relationship exactly the same to get that spacing. Two containers is not better than one. So that's the basics of drawing shapes and lines and applying line ends in InDesign. It really is that simple.